Hi, I'm Andrew from Creative Guitar Studio. It is Saturday, January 23rd, 2010, and I'm just going to pick up where I left off uh, the other day when I had posted the previous uh, video uh, blog that I was doing. Didn't have a chance to get through all the questions there. Uh, I'm going to carry on with a question from Richard from New York City. It says here, I bought a book called How to Write Songs on Guitar by Ricky Rooksby. <clears throat> it says the, uh, the author talks about the harmonized major scale chords, and he adds that you can flatten the third, sixth, and seventh of the scale and turn them into major chords, and you can also turn the second, third, and fourth degrees into the opposite of their quality in what he calls reverse polarity. I've never heard of that. Um, however, doesn't this lead to going out of the current scale that you're in, or is there some type of rule bending that I'm missing? Um, well, I can tell like, when I'm looking at your email here, and I'm, uh, this, going taking third, six, and seven, and turning them into major chords, you know, flattening them and turning them into majors is basically modal interchange. And as well, that goes with the fourth degree that you had mentioned to flip its opposite quality. When you do that, though, with the second and third, it's like you're taking a, just a portion of a dominant seventh, uh, like a secondary dominant application. So <clears throat> just in looking at this, it seems like he's taking a couple of music theory concepts and throwing them in a jar, shaking them up, and spitting out something that he made this term up for. Um, now, I could be wrong. I'd, I'd maybe go and Google reverse polarity uh, technique in music or something. Uh, maybe it is a, a some kind of a theory concept that I haven't worked with. But um, no, it just seems like it's a couple of basic ideas taken from um, uh, modal interchange and the application of secondary dominance. It doesn't sound like, uh, I don't know. But you are leaving you, you are leaving the key, definitely, with, uh, that if, uh, if you're concerned about that. And to play over that, you have to know a couple of the rules of, uh, of those concepts. Anyway, let's go over to the next email. It's from Kevin from California. It says here, I recently had a substitute teacher in my music theory class at college, and he kept using the term chromatic mediant. Uh, what are chromatic mediants? I did ask him after class, and he gave me a really confusing answer about them being thirds or sixths that share a quality. But I do not get this at all. Can you please answer this? Well, I'm not sure what context you guys were talking in, um, but he was kind of, you know, I guess he was kind of right, basically, what he had told you. Uh, see, first of all, a third inverted is a sixth. So let's say you had like an A note that was going over to a, a C sharp note. So that's, you know, basically a, a major third. Now, if you go C sharp, however, over to an A, uh, that's a minor, um, a minor sixth. So they, they invert their quality and flip around. So, um, you know, but uh, that aside, a chromatic median application would be like taking, let's say, you know, that A again. Let's say you were playing an A major chord and you moved over, retaining the quality, over to a C sharp, but you play C sharp major. As you know, in the harmony of that key, it should be a C sharp minor chord. So that's the application of, uh, of chromatic medians. Um, you can do the same thing going in like sixth interval movements. You know, like let's say you had like a G minor and you're moving over to like an E chord. Like you, you would play the E chord as a as an E minor essentially. So that would be that would be that concept. But I'm not sure how you guys were you know talking about that. Um, okay, so let's go to one more. It says here uh, this is an email from David. It says uh, he says uh, I'm a singer uh, songwriter. Uh, I play guitar as my second instrument. I use guitar to accompany myself, and I usually play solo gigs. Uh, I would like help with uh, understanding instrumental interludes. When I look for help on the web, I see lots of links related to soloing in a band or with a rhythm section. I can't seem to find anything about improvising guitar solos when playing alone. I would appreciate any help. Um, well, what you're going to need to do is almost you know like practice maybe with some jam tracks and then practice going in and out of them. But you are going to definitely need to know your scales, arpeggios, you know pentatonics, and, and know how to you know have a feel for playing around chord changes. You could use some double stop ideas. Maybe start learning some songs by players that do that kind of work. You know, the first guy that comes to mind that did that a lot is Jimi Hendrix. You know, maybe learn a few Hendrix tunes and try and play you know through the tune, adding licks and runs and uh, stuff in between the rhythm section uh, punches that are there. So um, it may be a combination for you really of learning some songs that apply that idea as well as uh, really making sure that you're well aware of your scales, arpeggios, you know, pentatonics, all that kind of stuff so you can integrate it in and apply it. So anyway, that's uh, pretty much all I have time for. I'm going to wrap up here and uh, I'll catch up with you next uh, week. I'll uh, post another one of these. I'm forever getting more and more questions that are sent in off my, uh, off my uh, YouTube channel and off the website. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.